dirt roads to rock crawling, tuba chuck to screaming eagle, moonshine to 50 year old single malt. We talk about it all here on Wheelin' Wine and Whiskey with your hosts, Jason and Chris. Welcome to Wheeling Wine and Whiskey, episode 275. Hello, Chris. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> We're, uh, we found a little small, we found a small spot of time where we can get together and do a little recording. Yes. Yes. We, how about we, that? We've both been jet setting and, and globe trotting. Yes. Yes. You have been jet setting for a change. That's good. I like it. Yeah. Uh, we're going to hear all about that. Absolutely. I think absolutely. a lot of our listeners are going to be able to be pretty jealous of what you just went and did. <laughs> I hope I so. Know I mean, I it, was a, it was a lot of fun. It was certainly, as I was doing these activities, I was thinking about the listeners, and it's like, this is going to be fun stories to, 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 to relay to, the, to, the, to our listeners, so I'm excited. Well, let me just bring down the podcast at the beginning, and then we'll just pump it up from then on. Hell yeah, let's do that. Um Got to gotta give a, a mention, a shout out here to uh, Uncle Ed. Unfortunately, Uncle Ed, um, I got news last week that he had passed. Yeah. Uncle Ed was, um, you met Uncle Ed a few times, mm-hmm. yeah. but Uncle Ed was uh, basically Carlos's right seat from TAC 1 Fab. Correct. And um, he was his uncle. <laughs> it's the name Uncle Ed. But <laughs> Uncle Ed loved off-roading he listened to this podcast and so uh it's only only feels right to give uh, a shout out um to uncle ed and uh a moment of silence if we could absolutely all right so uncle ed uh <laughs> there's so many great stories but one that comes to mind uh, moon rocks two years ago he made these donuts he made donuts for us, uh, in the morning, him and his wife. And I was like, Holy crap, these are wonderful. Uh, so I'm going to miss uncle Ed's donuts. I'm going to miss seeing uncle Ed on the trail, um, with, with Carlos. And, uh, I know Anthony from DF fab, you mm-hmm. know, they were all close. They, they all lived next to each other. And, uh, and Ed was over there all the time, helping, checking stuff out, doing whatever needed to be done. He was retired, but he stayed extremely busy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man, enjoy it while you can because uh, that 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 shit came out of nowhere, oh, absolutely man. nowhere. So, yeah. All right. So, um, Uncle Ed, we miss you. Rest in peace, Uncle Ed. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's get down to other business. What do you got in your uh, agenda there? Well, we got a ton of things, but uh, you know, I want to talk about my trip. But at the same time, I, I you mentioned we have some voicemails. We got voicemails. And we got any uh, reviews? I don't think we have any oh, okay. reviews. Nobody likes but... us. <laughs> All right, let's go to voicemails. Let's, let's see what I got mails, here. Yeah. All right, let's see what we got. We're gonna put this on speaker and go. Hey, Chris, Jason, a uh, question for you, a little bit. Uh, I'm struggling to debate on which tire I really want to get. So I'm looking at the 43-inch Super Swamper TSL or the 42-inch Mickey Thompson Baja Boss. Uh, I want to start driving the 4Runner on the road a little bit more. The Super Swamper is a cool tire. It's a balloon tire. It's large. I don't know if it's practical on the road. Nope. And then you got the 42 inch <laughs> Mickey Thompson Baja Boss that we were talking about. Um, they're a little easier to get my hands on, but I'm, man, I can't decide. Uh, I think you guys run the Super Swampers, but I was curious your guys' opinion. Um, I'm so stuck in my head, I'm asking other people's opinions because <laughs> I'm trying to pick both of them. Um, all right, thanks. You guys have a good one. Yeah. Okay, so that's our buddy Kevin Poole. Yeah, yeah. So, um, absolutely. 43 stickies. I, I am a believer for buggies for what I do. Absolutely love it. The, those tires are so durable. I bought that buggy six years ago, Chris, and it had huge gashes in the sidewall at right. the bead. And I'm like, Oh fuck, I, I need to buy, you know, new tires. And you know, everybody's like, just run them, just run them. So I've been running them for six years. 
And now they're getting they're getting San Hall approved. They're they're damn near race slicks. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get one more you know the rest of this season out of them, and then it's, I'm gonna have to bite the bullet. But for buggies, for rock crawling, for what we do, what I do, I am 100 percent sold on the Super Swamper mm-hmm. TSL stickies. Uh, the Mickey Thompsons, I haven't I haven't ran them. I've seen them. I've seen them on the trail. Um, I can't say that I'm, I'm that excited about them. If you're going to run on the street, I mean, stickies are not good on the street. They just no, are going to no. wear so damn fast. You'll blow through tires like crazy. But I would go BFG sure. stickies. If you're going to go stickies, go BFG stickies. If you're going to do some street stuff, my opinion, I don't know. What do you, what do you think? You got any opinion on that, Chris? I do not. Cause I don't run stickies, but I, I've been a huge fan over the years of the, of the Goodyear MTRs. And that's what I have on my, my Jeep. Sure. Uh, the latest generation MTRs and they're, they're great. Um, mine are not even really broken in to be honest, but, but, uh, again, not stickies, but they are, you know, the, when I do drive my Jeep on the street, it's, uh, they're pretty cozy. And I'm not sure if you can get them in those sizes for the MTRs. But, no, not that big. You know, the big meats that you're talking about, you know, and like I said, I've watched your buggy and ridden in your buggy with the, with the, uh, the what do you have on that thing? The, uh, what? On your buggy. Sorry, I'm, I'm having a memory lapse moment. Uh, well, 43 stickies. Right. Are you I mean, talking about TSL super TSL sw- swampers, yeah. yeah. They, I mean, those things hook up like crazy. Yeah, they're stupid. Yeah. And then obviously, you know, we've been, been on the trail where you you can't hit an obstacle or you don't, uh, don't, uh, conquer an obstacle right away. And then you let the tires eat a little bit and warm mm-hmm. them up and then you, you run it again yep. and, and boom, up you go, you know? So there's something to be said about stickies, but you know, as we said a moment ago, they're not so good on the street and those things in those sizes get super expensive. And, uh, unless you're, you know, you got money to burn, I don't know if that's a good idea. No, not, not on the street. Um, I, so I do have, um, the 37s sticky Baja, uh, Baja, fucking Mickey Thompson Baja. No, they are yeah, BFGs. Uh, BFGs. Yeah, yeah, they are yeah. BFGs. And I'll tell you, man, they are not fun on the street. They are, are, are just grabbing and fighting you and it's not a good street tire. So, I mean, for the little bit that I drive it on the street fine but i i there's a hands down noticeable difference and i've had the mtrs and you know regular bfg all terrains and mud terrains and blah 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 and anyways something to consider um trailer trailer life <laughs> that's exactly yeah. it i think yeah if you're trailer queens stickies, you, you know any any modification you do for off-road makes it less cap- capable or less comfortable on road. So Ooh, you got to find, I and I know, that. yeah, you don't, you know, not everybody has the luxury of 15 different vehicles and this, that for everything, but you got to figure out what you do more and favor that, that side. So I don't know if that helped or hurt, but uh, that's that's my opinion. <laughs> that's, that's our opinion. That's Wheeling Wine and Whiskey's opinion and Jason's opinion. Oh, our, yep. official, <laughs> our official, but does Lorenzo have an opinion? He just picked his head up. He he. I think I woke him up. Oh, he doesn't care. He's been napping all day. I like me. He's worn out <laughs> from the Rubicon. All right, here we go. Another voicemail. Another one. And go. What's up? Ricky Rob here. I was calling to see if I could get some uh, favorites from the listeners. Um, I have entered myself into... High Desert Top Truck for 2024, second year in a row. Um, I'm hoping I can get voted in this year. Uh, So I'm asking, please, if anyone can go to High Desert Top Truck on Facebook, check out an event that maybe you've never seen before, never heard of before. Really cool event. It's a two-day event, Friday and Saturday. Um, I don't clearly remember, but I think it's second weekend of October and voting ends at the end of this month. Oh, um, shit. there's a lot of cool rigs, uh, get over there and vote, give the, uh, event some attention and, uh, if you pick me up with a vote at the same time, that'd be awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, guys. Five stars every time. Yeehaw. 
Well, that ain't going to work out too well, is it? Because the end of the month is today that we're recording. <laughs> Sorry, this Rob. Did, this did have an expiration date, unfortunately. Wreck it, Rob. You need to call me. Just call because, uh, man, that's the best way to get a hold of me is call, leave a voicemail, and then. Uh, well, he did. Yeah, he he did, but I mean, like, call me personally. My phone mm. number's out there. Right, right. Um. Anyways. Uh, sorry, man, but good luck. I hope you <laughs> hope you do well. You know, and it, 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 it's I'll go online to uh, Facebook and the High Desert Top Truck Challenge, mm-hmm. and I'll uh, I'll I'll vote you in because it is the thirty first, and he left this voicemail on the fifteenth. So I apologize. We were uh, we were having fun at Meadow Lake, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then Rubicon, and then and then we had yeah we banked bankrolled quite a few episodes so um time traveling podcast style is uh is not good in this instance so no no not for him ah <sighs> dm dm me on wheeling wine and whiskey right or ig there the or, ig yep. give yep. me a message or call me if you have my cell number um that's if if something is a uh, time sensitive absolutely no doubt so well good luck i hope you get it in and we'll yeah. find out here in a couple of days. <laughs> right, because we time travel. Wreck it, Rob. I think he's down south, too. Yeah. All right. One, one, more. one more. One more. One more. One more. All one right. More. I don't recognize this number. It's a uh, 619 area code. Hmm. Mm. Mm. All right, mm. here we go. Hey, this is 4 by 4 Mark. 4 by 4 Mark. Going on this 1,500-mile road trip I'm on. From San Diego to Virginia and Shed. You guys are making me thirsty. All your whiskey stop. Just wanted to thank you guys. And Dodgers suck. <laughs> Do- Dodgers suck. Wow. Dodgers or Dodgers suck. He had kind of a bad connection. Wait, where was he headed? 1,300 mile trip from? She said San, San Diego. Diego. Yeah. Oh, to New Jersey? No, that's uh, that's that's, 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 that's more that. than fifteen hundred miles. Came mile. up at his New Jersey on my my tech or voice to chat here. Mm. Um, okay, wait, let's play that one again. Let's see if we can get. Hey, this, this is four by four mark. Four by four mark. Going on this fifteen hundred mile road trip I'm on from San Diego to Virginia and Shed. I didn't get it. Making me thirsty. All your whiskey stop. I can't even. He's gonna have to call back. And Dodges suck. Dodges suck. Okay, I like that. No, I, I like that. I like four that by four, all. Mark. I'm gonna give you applause. I'm not in control of the board, but I am gonna. I am gonna give you an applause for that. I'm, we, I'm, gonna, we, I'm gonna delete this episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I hope your uh, journey Beep. went well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, he called earlier this week, so. Um, Hopefully your road trip went well and Dodges do suck. Thanks for calling in. Like we said, you're on a road trip. You got nothing to do. A lot of windshield time. Call in. That's awesome. I'm glad uh, you're enjoying the whiskey talk. We have gotten, and you're right, Chris, when we do whiskey reviews and stuff, people really love those episodes. So hell yeah, they do. um, We got to do, we got to drink more whiskey and do more episodes. How about that? Uh, That sounds like a good, uh, okay. good, Good thing. I am drinking Horse Soldier right now. I picked it up at our local market. So, man, I saw it for 80 bucks, you know, and it's supposedly the number one whiskey voted by Forbes or whoever paid, you know, line their pockets. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, <laughs> um, it is good. And I got it for $46 at our local Rayleigh's here in Gardnerville. So um, I for 46 bucks, I'm not mad at it at all. Well, there you go. No worries. And as Big Pete would say, it goes down like rainwater. So, <laughs> all right. So that concludes the voicemails for yeah. uh, tonight. Sweet. All right. What else we got? I, I, if you have no, oh, I do have something. We have a little bit of new, new business. We do okay. have. I, I think we have a a re sign up new, uh, su- supporter of the show through the Barrel Society. What? Yeah, we have an add-on. We have a new uh, FNG is is a uh, fucking Snowboys. new guy. Exactly. I think he's he's been with us before, but he may have fallen off, and he's back. So I'd like, I'd like to welcome Slim Ash, Shady's back. Ash Santilli. 
Ash Santilli. All right. I'm welcome be- back. I, be- I believe he's been with us before, but welcome back. Awesome. Uh, he's that's super cool. I'll be getting a uh, letter and sticker out to you in the mail here shortly. Um, I've been a little busy, but uh, tomorrow's my biz- my pr- productive day to get stuff done in the uh, the old home day. office, yeah, editing and go. editing and and podcast business and so forth. So awesome. yeah, welcome back if if awesome. you have never been with us. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So we still, uh, yeah, we're we're still accepting uh, donations there. <laughs> on the irate four by four site you know you can go there irate four by four that's right and go to what is it watch listen and learn watch listen and discuss oh discuss why do i always say learn because i always learn something when i go to that site i do there's some great freaking stuff on there Absolutely. you can take the deep dive um but yeah check that out scroll past the other podcast whatever something about a slug or something and then uh right on to <laughs> wheeling wine and whiskey right there mm-hmm. and um yeah you can click that and there's three different tiers uh the one that fits you best and um yeah we love we love the support it it keeps things it keeps the lights on here at wheeling wine and whiskey it really does and uh yeah it, 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 we keep getting bombarded with expenses left and right and it's like what the hell? But anyways, that's part of the deal, part of running a, a podcast. So part of uh, running a small happen. business, you know. But I mean, if if you if you find it in your heart and you want to, you know, contribute and be, uh, you know, help 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 keep the lights on, totally appreciate it. Absolutely, not, not required, necessary. But not, yeah, but, exactly. Yeah, but we do appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. All right, what else you on. got? I got nothing else as far as business goes. Okay, you you had more fun than me, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I don't let's, know about that, but let's uh, hear about your ordeal because uh, I'm always the one talking about my fun trips. So yeah. let's let's let you have the limelight here. I'm gonna sit back and drink my horse soldier. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was, as we <laughs> talked in previous, nice horse soldier. I'll have to make a note about that. But uh, yeah, I took a quick trip down to Southern California with my brothers. My younger brother already lives in San Diego, and he's a listener of the show. His name's Pat. San Diego. And my older brother and I both live up here in the in the Bay Area, and uh, he and I got together at, at San Jose Airport uh, Friday morning for an early morning flight down to San Diego so we could... Uh, meet up with my younger brother and go to a rock concert rock and roll hoochie coo i have been uh, way overdue for getting it back out into the live music scene Uh, so it was super cool and these are three well it should have been four but three of my favorite bands that i grew up listening to uh and so it was uh steve miller band um journey and def leppard all wow. you know, major '80s bands, and there was supposed Heart was supposed to be involved, but as oh, we no. all know, uh, Ann Wilson was uh, yeah. diagnosed with cancer, so she's not. Uh, they canceled. They canceled that part of the tour, Damn but it. that's okay. The show was still freaking awesome. But that's kind of the that's kind of the climax of this trip, you know. I mean, the the stuff that went on prior to to getting to the actual concert was super cool, and and I want to kind of relay that to our listeners. Let's um, do it. So yeah, quick trip, quick trip, but packed full of fun and, and alcohol. My, uh, I'm not drinking tonight like Jason is because of my check liver light kicked on. <laughs> um, so yeah, I went to, like I said, went to San Diego, flew down, uh, got there about eight 30 on Friday morning. We arrived in San Diego and my younger brother picked us up at the airport and we're like, Oh, so when we got on the airplane, we were, we, uh, immediately each of us, Jeff and I both had uh, bloody Mary's on the flight down Southwest. Uh, no, it was, uh, Alaska. Oh wow! Yeah, they got good Bloody Mary mix. Yeah, they do, they do. So we uh, we we started priming the pump right away. Perfect. And uh, yeah, once we hit the once we landed, we uh, got in the car with the, my brother uh, picked us up in and took us out to breakfast to this place in the in Little Italy or Old Italy, li, Old Italy or old, Little Italy. Yeah, Little Italy. I think it's what it's called. A uh, super cool little restaurant called uh, what the hell was it called? I got to bring up a picture of it um but uh let me see you were it? you were right near born and raised um that i talked about when we were down there in san diego not far from the airport mm-hmm. right oh. by little italy and that was that killer whiskey bar that i was talking about oh no yeah i didn't didn't hit that but we ended up going to a place called morning glory 
Uh, oh, I saw that. This super cool uh, open air restaurant uh, upstairs uh, above, a, you know, this is in a building, multi-story yeah. building, but open air. We ended up sitting in this open air bar, uh, had another Bloody Mary, ordered Eggs Benedict, and uh, just enjoyed the scenery and the wonderful weather. And and uh, had a cup of coffee, a Bloody Mary, and, and Eggs Benny, and it was super good. That's a nice, so. that's a nice way to start a vacay. Hell yeah. So uh, enjoyed that. And then when we finished up, we jumped back in the car and raced across town to our hotel, The we- one of the Westons. I'm not sure which one it was. Yeah, it wasn't there's like 14 of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But my brother travels a ton, so he has all these uh, privileges and perks. We, we uh, early check in because we, you know, usually you can't check into a room until like 3 p.m. or right. something. But we got there at like 10 a.m. and checked in and then, uh, you know, unloaded the car, got everything situated up in the room, which uh, we didn't really need. I mean, we didn't really sleep much. But uh, right. uh, so, yeah, we we kind of dumped all, everything in the room, freshened up a little bit, and then we went out to go find some trouble. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ruh-roh, raggy. So, so you know uh, downtown uh san diego is super walkable um yes. but uh it's, i mean everything is super close together and and it's just a 15 minute walk in any given direction or 20 minute walk and you can find all sorts of activities or, or, or restaurants or bars or pubs or whatever, whatever um, you want and you know being that this is wheeling wine and whiskey 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 mm-hmm. i uh i mm-hmm. got the old i used my phone to search the old interwebs and found a whiskey pub or whiskey bar uh about 15 minutes away on 3rd street near the gas lamp uh which is like old not old town but old yeah. town separate but uh Anyway, we walked over to, to this place called the Whiskey House. The okay, Whiskey that's a good House. Name. Yeah, on Third Street. And uh, man, I was, and I know we've talked about several, you talked about places, I've talked about places either that we've been to separately or that we've gone to together, like the Lock, Locked Barrel sure. up in uh, Sacramento. Um, I'm going to say right now, the Locked Barrel is super cool. But this oh, place, oh boy, this place is out of control. So it makes the Locked Barrel look like McDonald's or something. Or I, would, what? I is don't it that I, extreme. I don't think it's it, Locked Barrel's kind of you know pretty highfalutin and very fancy and you know the it just seems like it, it caters to a much higher uh, so class. So maybe more client. like Fresh Choice or something. Yeah, <laughs> God, that's a blast from the past. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, what, what's the uh, what's the uh, Olive Garden? Olive, Olive Garden, Garden. right, right, one? right, okay, right. Let's go Olive Garden. So, <laughs> but uh, man, the Whiskey House. Uh, you know, if you're just going on sheer volume of of available uh, spirits, uh, the Whiskey House is hands down just kills it. So um, it lives up to its name. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. F- uh, they claim to have four thousand selections. Woo, doggy. Uh, and I don't doubt it. I mean, when I, when we step, step up to the bar and sat down, uh, the bartender gave us each a, a, a book. Well, there are four books. Each, each of us got a smaller menu that had like craft, you know, drinks and stuff like that, that you could order. Uh, and they had some food items that you could get, but we didn't, we didn't do any food. We weren't there to, we weren't there to eat. We were there to drink. Um, and then they had this big, big uh, menu that reminds me of, I don't know what, what it reminds I mean, it's much larger format, like 11 by 17 inch pages, I guess, uh, that was their, their whiskey wow. menu. And it was like 50 pages. <laughs> wow. <laughs> double-sided and i'm like looking through this thing and they you know had had it done down by region basically california and s- the different states and then it went uh, worldwide you know different scotches and so forth and so on single malts and they had you know from from the orient you know japan and whatnot so it was pr- pretty well broken down and then they had prices and of course when you when you see a menu like that yeah you, you start gravitating fun. to to see what what the expensive What's stuff the most is. expensive yeah so the, the, like i i found there at uh born and raised go ahead well they had one that was 899 dollars a pour so 900 oh, well, bucks that's, that's not that's not bad i didn't i don't that's <laughs> right near wheelhouse right that's jason green money right there i would i mean i'm like was that a half ounce or a full ounce i'm not sure it didn't they didn't you specify. didn't take pictures of the menu i took pictures oh, okay no. i mean there i'm looking go. all right so looky that, looky looky so the one that was 899 
And it's funny because my my camera cut off the actual name of it. <laughs> so, but it's a cell, a 2016 celebration, limited release of 256 bottles, and it's 899 dollars a sniglet. Uh, but yeah, I mean the, the the menu was crazy. I didn't I didn't actually look at the entire thing because it was just overwhelming. Right. But you know they at the beginning they have flights that you can do, and I ended up doing. Uh, what did I do? I did the Kentucky Bourbon Number no. Three flight, and that included uh, Michter's U.S. One small batch, right? Uh, Willet Pot Still Reserve. Uh, Rowan's Creek, which I've had, I believe, with you. Yes. Yeah, that was the one we talked about. That was mm-hmm. one of our blind tasters in uh, at Meadow Lake. Yep, yep. Uh, and that was good. Uh, and then Legion, uh, it, it's uh, just uh, aged in wine and sherry casks, and that was super good. And then they had an Elijah Craig small batch, which was also very good. But out of that flight... Um, the Willet Pot Still Reserve, which is that really mm. fancy bottle you see mm-hmm. at, uh, you know, Total Wine and More or whatnot. Well, it looks like a still. It looks like a still, Pot exactly. Still. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a little gimmicky, but I've I got mean, a 1.75 here on the shelf. Oh, you do? Yeah, it's almost empty. A handle. It That's it a really, really, really good whiskey. You liked or, it, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is good. Uh, bourbon. Uh, it is. Uh, it was my favorite. I actually went back to that one for another pour. Okay. Um, but, uh, or I finished. I finished the uh, the uh, the flight. Flight. Yeah. I I was sharing it with my brothers, and they're like, uh, "I'm going to finish. I'm going to kill this." And they're like, "Go ahead." <laughs> now, do you do you have some street cred with your brothers having a, a podcast named Wheeling Wine and Whiskey? Do they like? Oh, well, you must know your whiskey. Oh yeah, they they give me they they defer to me. Uh, okay, a little good. Bit, so good. But, You've earned uh, it. I hope. I hope. Uh, now, Pat, my brother, Pat, brought a bottle that we had in the hotel room for the inter- intermissions between journeys. <laughs> intermissions. And uh, what was that? I'm going to get the photos back up again. Um, it was, and it was, it's a local distillery to San Diego, uh, Liberty Call Distilling Company. Um, and he had this chocolate rye bourbon, which, uh, chocolate rye, it, it, man, it, it's, it, I thought it was going to be super sweet. I mean, it was definitely a little bit sweet, a little bit sweet, but not crazy, but it was, it was quite good. Um, so I'll include a picture of that in the, uh, in the show notes. I'm a little scared right now. Why? I don't know. A chocolate rye. Well, but it's not, oh, it's not overwhelming chocolate. You know, it's just. It was, you know, we, we didn't weren't ch- chugging it. It was little sippers. Little I mean, I'm, I'm envisioning, you know, uh, what's that peanut butter whiskey with the oh. sheep? <laughs> Screwball. Screwball. Nothing That's like that. That's what I'm envisioning. Nothing like Just that a at all. Fucking sugar bomb. No, not not at all. Okay. Not at all. Not all right. At all. So, all right. All right. Well, I don't anyway, have it, so I can't say anything. Back to uh, the whiskey, uh, the whiskey yes. house. Yes, the whiskey um, heezy. So after, I mean, you walk around this place. I took a video, uh, so it's like the entire every wall in this uh, bar uh, is covered with cabinets that are filled with bottles of bourbon and whiskey and gin and tequila and i mean they have a hall the hallway you go down to get towards the to go to the bathrooms and, the, and i guess the entrance to the kitchen uh i took a video of that and it's like glass cabinets just stuffed full of spirits <laughs> it's, perfect Sounds and they like a great place oh yeah i mean they had everything they had i mean it was, if you if, if if you can think of a name of a, of a spirit or a tequila or what or, i'm sorry a whiskey or a bourbon so I'm sure they have it. I'd be curious if if they had um, that Macallan Scotch, that 1977 Queen Elizabeth, you mm. know that I talked about, that Silver Jubilee. Mm-hmm. That was that was twelve ninety one thousand two hundred ninety dollars an ounce. So uh, I'd be curious if they had that on their their list because right down the street at Born and Raised. They had that bottle, but apparently there was only, I think, six, I said, six yeah. in the world. So what was it? The McAllen? McAllen 1977, Queen Elizabeth Silver Edition. Um, But yeah, I Silver Jubilee, it's called. 
Yeah, I'm look. I actually just downloaded their entire that book I was telling you about. Yeah. Oh, it's on their web on their website. Oh, I have to check it out. It's uh, so their website's thewhiskeyhousesd.com, all one word. Yeah. Um, and it's 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 how many pages is this? And there's a PDF right now. It's ninety. 90 pages 90 i was just <laughs> just looking back at this picture so they had a mccallan i i miss this a mccallan james bond 007 and oh. guess how much it was a, a 007 i don't know it was a hundred point seven it was a hundred hundred dollars and 70 cents an ounce perfect that's gimmicky but anyways whatever i'm sure somebody's <laughs> like oh i had james bond McCall-. anyways go on so you got to try some ridiculous good stuff oh yeah no i mean that's great that's atmosphere what, great atmosphere the bartenders were very knowledgeable and uh, i actually they had i mean they had some you know the local favorites up on the wall they had old elk there i found that oh wow uh, they had Frey they have Ranch. some of the uh did they have some of the uh like cigar cut and stuff of old elk like no the, not that i could see port finish or anything like that okay i, just I mean it was it elk. was it was above the door going towards the hallway to go towards oh, the bathroom so it wasn't on the regular like high access wall gotcha. um, but uh yeah i mean they had willet they, uh, they had all the willets they had barrel uh barrel whiskey they had i mean they had How about the woodfords Oh, they had Woodfords. They the had one oh one twenty seven point five that we like. Mm, I didn't didn't look for that, but uh, they also had every Blanton's you can imagine sitting up there. Oh, of course. <laughs> I'm sure, people were yeah the the new whiskey drinkers like I got to try that. I'm looking here, so single malt. Let's see, McAllen. I don't see. I don't, I don't have to look to this list off the air, and we can make All notes right. about it. But uh, yeah, well, tons that's a of cool stuff. So I ended spot. up. Uh, I ended up uh, getting a a uh, old fashioned. I wanted to, to test their old fashioned uh, skills, uh, so I had them make me a Frey Ranch with or an old fashioned with Frey Ranch rye, and it okay, it, it, it was nice. super good, super good. So Man, you can't go wrong with Frey Ranch rye. Nope. Nope. And, uh, but again, I, I would definitely, every time I go to, to, uh, San Diego, I'm going to try to hit this place up and enjoy nice. it in some other wall. <laughs> it is, it is good. I mean, going to those, you know, San Diego is pretty freaking cool. And, and there is so many great restaurants and bars like that. Um, and it's in a great area, you know, mm-hmm. wouldn't want to live there, but, uh, pretty, pretty wrong freaking with- cool. Can't go right. wrong with the weather there, no. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah, so we ended up we we were there for I don't know, a couple hours maybe, and then we we decided we ha- we were hungry again, so we wanted to go find tacos. And of course it's San Diego is famous Great for tacos. Tacos, you're making uh, me hungry now. <laughs> I haven't eaten dinner yet. So we we ended up wandering to this oh God, what was the name of it? Taco uh Gord- Gordita or something. Gor, uh, I don't Gorditas? know. I thought I made a note of where we went, but uh, I forgot the name of it. I'll have to look it up. But yeah, we ended up going to this taco stand or a taco restaurant that was on the corner, and it was weird because they had like a lot of security outside, and they kind of rut row. Yeah, well, I mean, it was just like private security, so I don't know if what I don't know what goes on there at night or whatever, but. Uh, <laughs> We ended up getting some some uh, carne asada tacos and and enjoyed those uh, upstairs in the loft of the place, and then uh, I drank some water to hydrate, and then we ha- wandered back to the hotel after that to take a quick nap because we're old and we needed to uh, recharge before the second before the big push for the rest of the afternoon, which was going to okay. be crazy. <laughs> so took a quick nap you know freshened up and then uh we went downstairs so my brother you know like i said he has privileges and whatnot so they they gave us a bunch of uh, vouchers for privileges well privileges he just gets a lot of free stuff from hotels and travels because he travels a lot yeah so we had vouchers for the for for the bar downstairs so we ended up drinking some sitting at the bar and having a cocktail or i actually had a had a a uh, uh, bottle or shit a glass a of bottle. beer a glass of beer and uh right. 
a pint, a, a pint. pint, yeah, a wee pint. And then, uh, yeah, well, then we ended up wandering down, started our way. Well, we weren't going to walk anymore. So we got an Uber to take us down towards Petco stadium, which is where the concert was going to be. Yeah, that's, that's a cool place. It's a cool stadium and that's super, super cool area of town. And you know, anytime you go to someplace that's got, that has a sports team, there's always all sorts of sports bars and pubs and watering holes mm-hmm. that are located on the perimeter. And, uh, <laughs> is, are, is the tilted kilt still right there? No, by the she, she gone. Oh, she gone. You know about that place. Yeah. You oh yeah. Going there. Oh yeah. The, yeah. The yeah. golf course conventions. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that's, it's gone. <laughs> We ended up we ended up at Bubs at the Park, which is a big sports bar um, on the corner of uh, the outfield. You know, the out, outside the stadium on the outs on the I don't know what direction that is, but the okay uh, the uh, outfield of the stadium or ball field, right? Uh, went in there and had a beer to keep the pump primed, and then um, you know hung out for a bit, and then it was like, oh shit, we got to get inside the stadium <laughs> so we can see the show because oh, wow, t- yeah. tons of people were starting to walk walk uh, down the street to get to the gate. Uh, so went in, no big deal, lots of lots of security, of course, and you know got through and wa- started working our way up to the to our to our seats, uh, but we stopped at a you know in stadium, you know. Uh, concession stand to get some drinks my brother i don't know why what he was thinking but he got a mai tai oh, I, got, I got a big old beer a pacifico that's in those 24 ounce cans right. and and then uh pat got something i'm not sure what a cutting water or something um three drinks inside the stadium uh 75 dollar wow <laughs> wow like, oof but uh, any uh, maggie yeah. Anyway, and w- worked our way to the seats, and we had good seats. We we're uh, behind home, not I mean up up uh, in the upper deck, but behind home plate. So we were like straight, sh- almost a straight shot to the state uh, to the uh, stage. Of course, the stage was far away, but they had I mean you could see everything. We had great yeah. great sight lines. Um, they started that show at six p.m. sharp. Okay, perfect. And so Steve Miller. I mean, we there was no build up to it or anything. How else, was Steve but, Miller? Oh, he sounded great. You know, so I saw him back in college, back in the mid nineties, mm-hmm. and he was, you know, great. Oh, uh, yeah. Put on a great show, and then I've seen him a couple times at big venues, and he's still rocking, man. Oh yeah, How no, old is he now uh, eighty, maybe I don't know. I like a, uh, he's he's pretty old. I think Pat, he's got to be. I think Pat looks up let's his age. Little, hey, Lorenzo. Yeah, time for you to go to work. He's going to look it up right now. Go on. <laughs> uh, anyway, you know they played all their 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 standard classics. You know, Jungle and all the, all the all their love. all their uh, their their hits. You know, and it was it, everybody was singing along. It was great. It was still light outside, so the light show wasn't really doing much for us. But uh, the music was great. <laughs> People were filtering in. Obviously, their the crowds were building throughout the uh the evening i think a lot of people were didn't care to, to uh, they didn't care about steve miller they want wow. to see i mean it's, it's just show, more people showed up for the later later uh uh you know journey and and uh def leopard but uh yeah i mean they they rocked it they played for a little over an hour and like i said they played all their their hits and it was it was great and so then, uh 80 years old Lorenzo yeah. just said he's 80 so yeah, my parents' age, which is born crazy. in 1943, October 5th, and he's still rocking it, man. From Milwaukee, Wisconsin. All right on. Uh, they, they sounded great. They uh, they played. They played. He's got a lot of great songs. Oh hell yeah! Like I said, they're all party songs. You know, college party songs. <laughs> Jet airliner. Yeah, go on. <laughs> okay. Anyway, they finished their set, and then of course they everything went silent while they ch- changed out the. Uh, the stage, you got all their equipment sure. off and brought in Journey stuff, and it was getting dark at that point. And then Journey kicked it off, man! Holy smokes! It was it was like dark, almost completely dark at that point, and wow. so the light show was kicking it up, and the pyrotechnics, and yeah, they played for a, over an hour, uh, maybe hour and a half, and they played all their you know big hits, of course, and right. you know they have that new singer. I'm not sure what his name is. I mean, he's new. He's been there for like ten years, ever since Steve Perry. 
you know, retired and couldn't see right. anymore. But this this guy that couldn't see anymore. <laughs> well, I think he's from the Philippines. Their new their new lead singer, and he's a showman. I mean, he he dances and and struts and does you know just moves around and just works the stage and works the moves crowd. like Jagger. Uh, I'm not. Uh, yeah, maybe a young Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah super cool they, they they lit it up man they i you know it just not to give it away but i i feel like that uh journey did a better did the best part of the show well um, you're not giving anything away it already happened yeah so um i mean def leopard is still one of my huge favorite bands but what's I, your favorite I, song of, of what def leopard, def leopard. Uh, animal or yeah. py- pyromaniac you know? pyromaniac that's I mean, the one they have so many good songs though but yeah those are and they played all those obviously but uh yeah so journey was great they played faithfully you know i mean all the great songs um and then uh, obviously they took an intermission because they had to change out the stage again for the for the 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 lead lead band def leopard and that was awesome. I mean, they, they kicked it up a notch, but it, it just, it seemed like in the middle of their set, they kind of went, it went into a lull, like into, into like, uh, acoustic instruments only. And, and I was like, you got to keep this crowd fired up. But, yeah. uh, cause you know, Def Leppard has a lot of high powered songs and they kind of went into the, into the, uh, ballad stuff. And I'm like, huh, okay. This is kind of falling flat. But then they, Uh-oh. then they, 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 they kicked it up a notch again so they they finished strong but uh just on that note you see what i did there pun Uh uh-huh yeah um that's that's good that's good very good nice i I felt like the energy level of the journey set was was better than the def leopard set okay well there you go um, yeah it's interesting you know because i've seen I, i love music and i've seen a lot of live venue concerts whatever but um yeah, it, it's like some some artists disappoint you when they, you know, kind of don't do their normal gig or whatever. But then some of them surprise you, too, by doing some cool stories and, you know, a little song that they did for their family that's mm-hmm. not public. You know, it just that's some cool stuff. Like, uh, you know, we just saw Aaron Lewis here a couple months ago. And, dude, he just was off the cuff, just he did his, his classics, but he did a lot of new stuff and personal stuff and told stories in America. And, you know, America. anyways, it's, it's, it, yeah. So you just, you never know. And then you go see Hank Williams jr. And he's half drunk and can't even sing. And I finally, <laughs> I finally got to see him. The last concert I saw with him was really good. Uh, the venue was not the best, but, uh, <laughs> Is that the one well, on Highway that was it. Well, it was getting to the venue, I should say. The venue was great, but that was in Murphy's That's at right, Ironstone. Yeah. And it, I mean, literally, we were in a traffic jam for like an hour and a half, not moving, trying to get to the. It was well, those poor. roads are not those roads are terrible. Are well, the, here's the deal: they've hosted several thousand concerts. You think they'd have it figured out? But anyways, um, let, let's continue with your story. Oh yeah. So anyway, yeah, no, super, super cool show. They wrapped up at 11. We wandered out and, uh, you know, it's like, we got to get some food, big crowds. And it's like trying to wait for an Uber to get back to our hotel. So we oh no, no. <laughs> wandered into Carmelita's kitchen de Mexico. Oh, muy bueno. Which is literally right next to the stadium Perfect. and, uh, ended up getting a some quesadillas and some nachos that were pretty nice. damn good. So nothing nice. like nachos at 1130 at night. You know, yeah. you have to, after a concert, <laughs> you got to go. I, I, some of the best meals I've had have been at Denny's or something. At the, you got to soak up all that show. alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe so, not the best food, but the best times at a, right. At a restaurant you normally wouldn't go to. <laughs> yeah well you never know you never i mean i at that point i had stopped drinking because i was like freaking exhausted but uh had had the, finished up that little meal and then we grabbed an uber back to the hotel and then we immediately crashed and went to you know Nighty all of us went to bed and then you didn't have any chocolate whiskey no no i was done cap? i was done sounds like, sounds like a good nightcap that's what that's probably made for I don't know. It's, it doesn't taste like too much chocolate. So, okay. but anyway, yeah, it was lights out, man. We, and then I woke up at my normal stupid three or 4 AM and, um, 
even though I, I only got three or four hours of sleep. And then, yeah, just got, you know, took a quick shower, got dressed, went to the airport, caught our flight, and uh, I actually slept on the plane uh, flying back up here to San Jose. And then, oh, the really, the down, I mean, the, to cap this trip off, obviously it's, it's, it's Labor Day weekend. So tons of traveling. I've, AAA had said they were going to be record breaking you know, road trips and airport traffic and whatnot. I, I, I'll agree. I mean, the San Diego airport, uh, this morning was busy. Really? (laughs) So, and then even San Jose airport when we landed at like 10 was, was crazy. Um, but the worst part was, uh, going up 680 to, uh, in Fremont, I'm bopping along. I'm thinking I'm making good time. And then all of a sudden I wasn't. And, uh, I guess there'd been a, there'd been a wreck on the other side of the Sonola on the downhill side. And, uh, that just wadded things up and what I should have been home and no more than 30 minutes ended up taking me almost an hour and a half, which, uh, was frustrating cause I was tired and I just wanted to get home and get, you know, just sure. relax and just, uh, maybe even take a nap, which I did do. <laughs> so Great. yeah, I'm trying to get recharged. I mean, it's just, you know, I'm getting a little older and doing all this stuff. Like I, I'm trying to, like I did when I, I'm not 25 years old anymore no, and no, can't just go, go, go harder staying up late. So, but it was super fun. I would do it again. Uh, you know, I mean, it was, it was the, one of the best parts of the whole trip was spending time with my spending time with my brothers. Yeah, that's um, cool. it was very cool. We, uh, we hung out, we told stories and, you know, just, just goofed at, goofed, uh, goofed off, which was, which was fun. So sweet, sweet. Well, that's, that's cool. Nice, nice trip. Nice, nice report there. Yeah. It's not wheeling, but it's, uh, you got out of the house and made it happen. I love it. Yeah, no doubt. And I enjoyed a little bit of whiskey on the way. <laughs> yeah. And you, and you got to go to a great whiskey house. <laughs> yep. I, it sounds I, like the whiskey house. And I, I talked to them and I said, uh, I'm going to give them a shout out on the show. And he gave me the, the card, which got a little munched in my pocket. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try to connect with them and maybe get somebody on the show. It'd be kind of fun. Okay. All right. But but I, you know, talked up the show a little bit to both the bartenders that were there. And the one said, said one, I don't, I could, didn't catch her name, but she said she'd give us a listen. So hopefully if you're Did- listening from the whiskey house, hope you enjoy the show. Did you give her a card? I didn't have any cards. You on didn't me. have any. Oh my God, you're so good about stickers, and you had no cards. Did you mm. give her a sticker? I didn't have any stickers on. Oh me my Dude, God, I wasn't walking around with a backpack, and I didn't have my pocket full well, of stickers. Well, you should have your. You should have some business cards in your wallet. Yeah, which reminds me, I got to reload. So yeah, I, I failed in that regard, but in the rest of it, I had a good time. So okay, all right, fair enough. So what did you do? Did you Nothing. want to talk about what you did? Is there anything, what did what you do be was is what you did as cool as what I did? Um, <laughs> I don't know. It was pretty cool. It was uh, unique. It yeah. was, uh, you know, always a good time out on the Rubicon. So went went back to the Rubicon, and uh, I must say, it 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 don't. I mean, I. I appreciate and super grateful for where I live now because I don't have to go through the traffic and bullshit that you just talked about in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. But um, I, it didn't dawn on me till this trip that going from my house to the Rubicon, I, I don't go on any freeways. It's all, I guess, technically highways. Yeah. Um, but, you know... Um, but you're going around the lake, you know, and you're not you're not on a major freeway. Now, with that said, that comes with its own challenges, which I do have a little rant, uh-huh. if I may. <laughs> if I okay. may, you may. Um. So, driving along a single lane road, you know, one way each direction. Yeah. And you're in the Tahoe vicinity where there's holiday weekend, like this weekend. Um, there's a lot of pedestrians. Oh, yeah. This is going to be twofold. Because there's there's a lot of uh, people that are not realizing that there's other people in the world that they live in. Mm-hmm. They think it's their world. And they're literally like walking out in the street. <laughs> 
They have no sense of self-preservation? Apparently not. And I'm like, oh, my God. And some of these these people had families, like small kids. Uh And I'm like, what are you doing? You know, and so traffic comes to a halt because these idiots are walking in the street because there's cars parked on the side of the road. I get it. But walk on the other side of the cars. On the, Let the cars protect your family. Okay. That's one. Whatever. <laughs> Is this like near stupid. Camp Richardson? Is that? Oh, yeah. Near Camp Richardson stuff. And then here's my rant. And okay. I, I, I get it. Pedestrians have the right of way, right? Like mm-hmm. in a crosswalk, right? Mm-hmm. Am I right? Pedestrians have a right of way. Like, they do. As long, like, well, so once it, they so, step into it, yes. So if there's a crosswalk, like a designated crosswalk, and you see somebody waiting, you should stop as a courteous, kind, and professional motorist to let those people cross the street. Right. I get that. I'm all for that. Yes. But if there's no crosswalk... And you decide to be, oh, my God, I'm going to do an act of kindness and stop in the middle of the fucking road to let somebody jaywalk across the fucking street. (laughs) And there's 19,000 cars behind you and you just slam on your brakes. And I've got an F-350 pickup with a trailer and a fucking 4,000 pound buggy on the back. I almost went through their fucking back window because all of a sudden they stopped out of the blue to let somebody not not. In, in in the right side of the street. Mm-hmm. It was on the far side of the street. Oh, God. Right? Oncoming traffic. They were on the other side of oncoming traffic. What the fuck? Yeah. I, 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 I don't know how I missed not hitting them. And I'm like, I get it. You want to be courteous, but look in your fucking mirrors that you're supposed to check every eight fucking seconds to see if there's somebody behind you. Or wait, if there's fucking 18, 19 cars behind you. Mm Mm-hmm. Common sense. It's not common sense because not everybody has it. So No, no. Anyways, I get the crosswalk thing. I understand that. And then this guy got upset at me. Because I was fucking laying on my horn, and he didn't flip me the bird. I know he wanted to, but his wife and kids were in the car. Uh, but I almost got to meet their kids in the back seat with my yeah. F-350 pickup. That wouldn't have ended well. Mm-mm. And the guy was a total idiot. I won't say the nationality because I'm going to be very diplomatic here, but you could guess the nationality <laughs> right. of this individual. All right. Brant over. Rant over, rant mode so, off. So I uh, went to the Rubicon. Yeah. And it was f- beautiful. Last weekend. weekend was rainy, uh-huh. cold. Uh, our buddy Kelly Radcliffe was up there last weekend. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so thank you, Kelly. Shout out to Kelly for taking all the bad weather out <laughs> last weekend. Right. Because we had a beautiful weekend. That's um, good. It was awesome. Met up in... You know, Tahoma side entrance mm-hmm. of the, the Rubicon. Ta- Tahoe side, yeah. Yep. And uh, went in, and it was a slow boat because there was a lot of people. Yeah. Um, it, it, I thought it was just going to be a couple of us. I thought it was just going to be Dolly, Eric, and I. Um, but it ended up being like seven, eight rigs. Oh, but boy. it was fun. And it was a cre- – so it's a it's a slow boat going in on that Tahoma side. It's just – it's a rocky – not hard. There's a mm. couple hard sections or more difficult. Um, but it's just a slow boat getting to observation point. It took us two hours to get to observation point. Holy moly. It's like, isn't it like eight miles? <laughs> yeah. And um, so I got to observation point in the buggy and I had Bomber Bob behind me. And uh, Bomber Bob's great. And uh, he's in a, a Razor, a Polaris side by side. Okay. And yeah, so I get to the point. Fast. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. He could, he could motor if you want, but we were, we were like, all of us were like, Oh, this is cool. We're just cruising. But it got old. It got old it, after the first hour. And <laughs> into the second hour, I'm like, okay, I'm over this. So they get to observation point And I look, uh, Randy was there 
uh, Slauson and I look over at Randy and I go, I'm going to go. And he goes, take Bob with you. And I go, Bobby, come on, let's go. And he goes, okay. <laughs> so him and I from observation point made it to Buck Island in less than an hour. And I had to get wow. out and tow him in two spots at the Z turn in the big sluice. Oh, uh-huh. um, just a little tug and in, in one, he definitely needed it. The other one, maybe, you know, he could have motored, but w- there's no sense in busting up your equipment, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so we get after that, it was no problem. Just psh, he was right on my back door and we were just, you know, good pace made it there before dark and set up camp. And, um, Justin had, uh, saved us a beautiful camp right on the lake at Buck Island. And, uh, you know, it's funny holiday weekends are, are hit and miss out there. I mean, I hate to give away an ancient Chinese secret, but usually it's not that busy out there a holiday weekend. And it wasn't that busy. Mm. It was, I mean, it got busier last night. Um, you know, we're recording this on a Saturday night. So Friday night, it got busier. Obviously, people getting off work and heading up there. But mm-hmm. it was not that crowded for a holiday weekend. Um, beautiful, great weather. And it's um, a double psych, right? It's like, well, I'm not going to go because it's going to be crowded. Right. Well, that's it, right? Them. I'm it's not going to go busy. either because it's going to be really crowded. And then no, nobody goes. And, it's and then like- nobody goes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly it. So, um, but anyways, yeah. So... We got in there Thursday um, evening, set up camp. I got a freaking unbelievable campsite on this. There was like just enough flat spot for my gazelle tent. Cool. Overlooking Buck Island. I mean, I was literally like 12 feet from the water. And I go, okay, this is freaking killer. And um, no mosquitoes. Didn't oh, even put nice. on any mosquitoes. You know, it's that the, time of the year the now. cold weather gone. knocked them back. Yeah. Well, the spring is is when they're just treacherous, but the hot weather just, they're gone. So anyways, great time and, um, no campfires, obviously. So, right. um, we didn't even put out the portable, uh, propane pit. It was like, everybody was kind of tired and we BS till like 10 30 or something. And then good night. <laughs> <Bye-bye>. <laughs> so, um, Friday was great. And I, I had intentions. I brought some extra fuel, um, to run the RTF loop. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, with this crowd, there's, there's a lot of good wheelers in this crowd. And I thought, well, we're going to go run the RTF. Everybody's like eating their breakfast and just easing in the morning. And I go, uh, anybody want to run the RTF loop? And no, no, we're just going to chill. We're going to go on the lake. We're going to maybe go for a hike. And I'm like, all right, it's going to be just a chill day. Yeah. So noon rolled around and started drinking. <laughs> and just <laughs> yes, it, and Yeah, so it, it was just a nice, relaxing day at Buck Island, and I haven't done that in a long time. Cool. Um, and then, um, then it, it, you know, the, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it was... <laughs> There was there was a small group. I thought there was going to be a lot more people, but it was a small group. Mm-hmm. And um, we, uh, like I say, we were just chilling, drinking, you know, having a good time. And all of a sudden, it was like four o'clock, uh-huh. five o'clock, and I'm like, oh crap! So uh, I guess the cat's out of the bag now because uh, uh-huh. I was surprised at how many people on the trail knew about this event, but. Um, it was for the uh, Randy and Amber Slauson wedding. <laughs> and uh, so they got married at Buck Island. Yeah. And so Randy's family was there. I met his parents. Uh, it was the first time his dad had driven on the trail. He rented um, a Jeep, I believe, from Tahoe Rubicon jeep Ventures rentals or, or something yeah something but it had an sf baja sticker on it the the san francisco bay area um you jeep know association jeep uh, jeep club the online jeep club yeah had yeah. a cal four wheel sticker on it 35s four door um not sure what year it was but it was you know not that old had a lot of you know aftermarket stuff on it i think it had metal cloak uh suspension and stuff on it but 35s mm-hmm. 
Yeah, thirty five. And it had skid portal. plates. Yeah, had skid plates and everything. I mean, it was it was obviously Rubicon ready. Um, but yeah, that that was uh, and it had a hard top and it had a roof rack and the roof rack they had loaded and they had four people in there. That that rig was loaded down. They got their <laughs> money's worth. Let's just put it that way. Out of that rig, perfect. Um, going going into to Buck. Um, so yeah, it was great. Uh, of course the whole Hannah family was there minus Gavin minus Stuart. Um, so, uh, that, that I, I was looking forward to seeing them, but, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Sarah was there tackle box. Um, wow. and wasn't she just out at, at Bur- burning man? <laughs> she was. So she told Bernie man stories last night. I can't repeat any of them, but it just, I have no desire to go out there. It's just a freak show. It's a yeah, freak show. That's what I've heard. I, I've heard enough stories. It's a freak show. I have no desire to go, but whatever, to each their own. Um, <laughs> and people probably think we're fucking batshit crazy for going out on the Rubicon. Yeah. So, uh, you know, whatever. So, Everybody's so got their thing. It's perspective. You, you do you, boo. You, so, um, <laughs> don't yuck my yum. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so, so uh, ceremony last night around, it was supposed to be six, but it ended up being about 6.30 because um, Dustin, who bought Gold Digger, his cousin, mm-hmm. I got to see Gold Digger again yesterday. Oh, God good. damn, I, I, that's such a cool fucking rig. Um, but they, his wife drove the Bronco in and they had some serious issues. Um, they had some electronic four wheel drive issues that wouldn't want to go into four wheel drive. Then the lockers wouldn't want to lock. And, uh, so they were a little tardy. So we knew they were coming, uh, through radio contact. So we waited for them wow. and, uh, but it, it was cool. It was chill. It was exactly how it should be, uh, for, for two off-roaders, the, uh, ultra four power couple I'm calling them now. Mm-hmm, right. <laughs> So my gift to them um, is, it was uh, dinner because Amber was asking me at lunch last week. She's like, oh, how do I do this? How do I do that? And I go, okay, is this for your wedding dinner? And she goes, yeah. I go, I'm going to cook your wedding dinner. What do you guys want? Okay. So she went and bought the steaks from this butcher boy uh, shop, butcher shop up in Reno. Uh huh. Beautiful two inch ribeye steaks. So I'm like, all right, Jason, don't don't screw this up. <laughs> so I learned a hack. We talked about sous vide before on yeah. this podcast, but so I was like, okay, I've sous vide fish and you know steaks and chicken and everything, mm-hmm. but I always cook it right afterwards. You know, yeah, you get reverse it, you, you finish it off. Yeah, you do the reverse. Exactly right. Reverse here on cast iron or the grill or whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm like, you know, she gave me these steaks like a week ahead. And I'm like, I don't want to freeze them because that's going to degrade the steak. This, right. It's just, just too good of a steak to freeze. Um, so I started doing the deep dive on sous vide. And I go, can I sous vide it? And let it sit in the refrigerator for four or five days and then cook it on the trail. And the answer is, hell yes. So I talked to some chefs. I did a deep dive on YouTube. You can sous vide meat to the temperature, basically, you know, pasteurizing it. Mm Mm-hmm. You could put it, you got to quick chill it. So you got to put it in an ice bath once you're, once you're done cooking it, okay, in the sous vide. Mm-hmm. And then put it in your refrigerator. It will last three weeks. Wow. Three weeks. And it's already, it's like refrigerator temp. So like you, you could, it's like an ultimate hack for me, Mr. Bachelor, because I freeze all my shit and I got to, think about the morning and go, Oh, I want a steak tonight. So I better pull that out of the freezer and let it thaw and then cook it that night. Well, I could have that already thought out pre-cooked parentheses, right? Mm -hmm. I cooked it to 130 degrees. So it was medium rare, Mm -hmm. put it in the refrigerator after a quick chill of the sous vide. And then we went out on the trail and I'm like, okay, got to got to sear this in cast iron so i had some compound butter that i had and stuff and and seared it got a beautiful crust on the steak 
Great. I'm like, okay, I'm super happy with this. Had twice baked potatoes. Mm. Um, I did zucchini spears with uh, lemon salt, garlic bread, and then my uh, my mom's famous Italian salad. Oh, and yeah. that was the dinner. And and had white linen tablecloth <laughs> oh, on this table wow. overlooking Buck Island. It was a phenomenal venue, right? Uh-huh. And and to pull off a meal, I, I was I was super nervous. Um, I'm like, don't fuck this up, right? Um, but I'm like, okay, I got all my decks in a row. I did all my prep at home. Mm-hmm. And then it was game on Donkey Kong last night and, and pulled it off. And um, they, yeah, Randy and Amber were like, this is fucking damn good. And Randy's like, this, this might be the best steak I ever had. And I'm like, right on. Okay, cool. Mission accomplished. There you go. Congratulations, Randy and Amber. Yeah, Great freaking wedding. Great venue. Uh, it's, uh, but a lot of people knew about it on the trail. And we were, you know, we were just camped right off the trail at Buck Island. So we'd mm-hmm. go up and watch. There was only like a handful of groups that went through yesterday. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, you're here for the, uh, the wedding? <laughs> And I'm like, how did this get out? Was it publicized on Facebook oh, or I'm sure there is. I don't know. I because it, it was it wasn't hush hush, but I wasn't publicizing it. I don't know, but a lot of people knew about it. This is how funny how many people knew about it. I drove out today. This is Saturday morning now. Um, that that I drove out with that we're recording this Saturday evening. Mm-hmm. So I left camp this morning at 10 a.m. And I'm cruising up the trail. Well, here comes two sheriffs the the that patrol the trail right. on foot with their German shepherd. And oh. I'm like, oh shit, did their Jeep break down or what? So I stop and talk to him. And he's like, hey, we want a whiskey. <laughs> so they knew they knew uh podcast. So I gave them some stickers and they're like, um, is the wedding today or was that yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god they're i'm like shit you guys even know it was yesterday probably going uh, to check to see if they had permits or something well no and i go i go <laughs> i go hey go into camp get koozies and tell them jason sent you so they were heading into camp they were about 10 minutes away from camp so um that was cool so shout out to those guys and he is a big whiskey drinker and he we we started talking whiskey um and he just acquired a bottle of uh, Jack Daniels Coy Hill, Ooh. which is a very uh, high proof Jack Daniels whiskey. Um, I've never had it. I've heard about it. Uh, I'd like to try it. And he's like me. He's like, you know, this was one of my bottles that I wanted to get and I'm willing to share it. So um, hopefully we can connect up. I gave him my card and number and I said, good. hey, let's let's share some whiskey. So um but it was good to see them patrolling the trail and keeping everything right. I did not see any idiots out there. You know, there was some gunshots last night, but um, I, I don't know. Shoot. I didn't see any bears or anything. I have no idea what, well, that's you know, good. if don't... it was just a random deal or if they were warding off a bear, scaring off a bear. But um, anyways, Rubicon freaking phenomenal. Love it. Sweet. And uh, Yeah. Congratulations to the uh, new Ultra Four Power Couple. I'm calling them. That's right, Amber and Randy. <laughs> Sweet, congratulations. Yeah, sorry I missed cool. it, but I was having my own version of fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you'd book that in advance, and this this thing just kind of came out of the blue. Yeah, it was kind uh, of one of those few weeks uh, ago shotgun yeah. wedding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, and you're but like not, <laughs> but you're like I I already got plans, and I'm like okay, I get it, you know. Yeah. Um. It was good. Good group of people there. Uh, we had fun. It was chill. Nobody got out of control. I, I thought it was going to be a little bit more crazy last night, but everybody was like chill. And we sat around a little ammo can fire. I'm, I'm calling it the Beto box that Eric built. Beto box. Yeah. Amber, Amber's dad. Yep. And that thing worked really well. He, this is the second one he built and he's refining it. And, uh, way cheaper than the lava box setup so oh yeah um but it, yeah with not having campfires but i will say the nice thing about propane fire pits as much as i hate them um you don't smell like smoke when you get home you know it takes no. like four or five showers to get the the smell out of your hair but uh campfire smoke but yeah anyways it's good stuff buggy right ran on. great good and uh in and out uh, effortless and uh, 
yeah, getting ready for the next trip, which we'll talk about on the next podcast. The next episode. That's right. Cool. Well, yeah, we've both been, been busy and, you know, the adventures continue. So we'll, uh, to be continued. Yes, sir. You got anything else? Um, no, I, I think that is it. Um, we got our voicemails covered. Everything's good. Um, and we're wrapping up summer, unfortunately. I mean, here we are last day of August. We're coming into September. Um, we, we, you and I need to get back to Barrett Lake where the podcast started before it closes this That's winter. That's right. Yep. Yep. So, um, we need to pick a date, get out to Barrett and make that happen. Captain. Uh, let's try to do that for sure. There is no try. There is do. There's do. There's do, <laughs> right? So, yeah, absolutely. So if you want to get a hold of Jason or Chris, you can you'd send a call and leave a voice message at 408-800-5169. Again, that's 408-800-5169. Uh, leave a message and we'll play it on the air most likely. Uh, you, we've heard we've played some pretty rough stuff and some pretty pre- pretty, pretty great stuff, stuff. So, <laughs> but if it's time sensitive, DM me or something. That's because, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I, I apologize, Rob. The, that and, that sucks. I, I wish we could have got that out. But I am going to go online right now uh, on the High Desert Top Truck Challenge and make that happen. And don't say Dodges suck. That's all. And Dodges suck. <laughs> so you can also email us Jason at WheelingWineWhiskey dot com and or Chris at WheelingWineWhiskey dot com. You can go to the IG, which is at Wheeling Wine and Whiskey, which Jason just mentioned. DM us there. And yeah. that's, a, that's a great way to communicate back and forth with, with us uh, for the show. Well, yeah, absolutely. And it is, uh, we love we love hearing from you guys. And just, yeah, it's been a great, great ride. Five years. <laughs> five years, over five. Yeah. So, sweet. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't got anything else you got. You, you good? I got nothing. I got nothing. I'm going to hop onto Facebook right now and check this out and get a vote in for Wreck-It Rob. And, uh, so yeah. will I. Call it a night. Perfect. With that, we're out. We're out.